we're going to talk about salvation for all. Uh, when I was growing up, I did not grow up in the area where I believe there was white and black and there were divisions and, and so forth. But in your context, in most of our context that we're in right now, many people in America grew up with that idea that there are white, black, that there are divisions that are going on among one another. But by the grace of God, I want to come today to talk to you about what the gospel story says and how Christ sees us and what Christ has accomplished for you. Did you know that? Christ, he does not see you as white and black and he does not see you in those type of lenses and give white privileges or black privileges. No, 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 no. In, in the eyes of Christ, what Christ has accomplished on the cross is so important for you to understand because yes, you might be black right now, but your, your white friend down, down the street, guess what? That's your brother. That's your sister. And uh, we are all equal in the eyes of Christ. I just gave you the sermon, but I got to break it down. You might be saying, Where's the scripture pastor? Where we're, we're getting this from? I'm glad you asked because we're a Bible believing church. And so we're going to go into the word of the Lord, break this down as we're looking at God's salvation, looking at God's salvation. So jump with me to Luke chapter two, reading from verse 25 to verse 32. Father, bless this word. Bless us as we meditate upon the scriptures. Free us, liberate us, give us assurance again of what Christ has done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, verse 29, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Hmm, hmm. I want to talk about God's salvation through Christ for all people today because uh, I was sitting down, I was sitting down around a table, my wife and I, and I heard a conversation uh, from some ministers, ministers of the gospel of Christ said to me that, you know what, there was an experience that one of the ladies around the table had where a Hispanic had been brought into the church, uh, came visiting the church, and wanted to be baptized in the church. And so the lady, she was from Jamaica, she saw this Hispanic gentleman. She said when she saw him, he looked uncomfortable. Hmm. Hold, hold it right here. She walked over to him and said to him, maybe this is not the place for you. That church was a Jamaican church. She walked over to her, him and said, maybe this is not the place for you. Maybe you need to find a Hispanic church that is down the street. And, and she encouraged him to join the Hispanic church down the street. Now, she was laughing and bragging and saying that Jamaicans need to stay in their lane. Hispanics need to stay in their lane. Haitians need to stay in their lane. An American preacher who is studying to be a pastor and a Haitian pastor were agreeing with her and saying, yes, you are right. Everyone need, needs to stay in their lane. Now, my, my wife and I, we, we're having a heart attack at the moment because we cannot believe that ministers of the gospel are having this type of conversation about to go out in ministry and preach behind the pulpit to teach people the everlasting gospel or believing this theory. Now, one of the pastors uh, uh, kept uh, to affirm what the lady was saying, he says that in Revelation, there are 12 
different gates, 12 different gates that people will be walking through. And he says that people will be coming from, in these grapes, 12 different tribes from different cultures and backgrounds and so forth coming through these different gates. And so Jamaicans will be coming through one gate, Hispanics will be coming through another gate, and Americans will be coming through another gate, and Europeans will be coming through another gate. The pastor was breaking down this a cultural division that will be taking place in heaven based upon his understanding of revelation and based upon his understanding of the bible and the gospel story now my friend i got to i got to tell you i got to break this down for you to free you because this is the height of heresy this is as much heresy as you can get to make you think that uh, heaven is going to be are divided based upon culture. And so now we need to function down here on earth with cultural divisions. This has been America's upbringing to make you think that culture and nationalities and, and color, the color of your skin, you must be divided based upon that. But God help us today because the Bible, the Bible shows us the clear gospel truth that goes Contrary to everything that these theologians and what America has been saying. Hmm. Hmm. Simeon, Simeon, he received this prophetic insight from the Lord. And he declared something to Mary and Joseph as they're in the temple that was amazing that went against the cultural con con condition or tradition of Judaism. Because Judaism, while they might not believe in so much racism, they did believe in nationalism. <laughs> they believed that Jews were the peculiar people, that, that Jews were only the ones to be saved. Not, not the Gentiles, not the Samaritans, but the Jewish nation. And so they had this cultural, national, uh, theological understanding of god that they, they 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 built this momentum so the people now thinking that you know what god is only for jewish people god is only for a certain group of people you had to uh, look a certain way you had to dress a certain way you had to believe a certain thing and they base all of this based upon circumcision you got to be circumcised to be part of the family of god well jesus came on the scene hallelujah now Simeon, as he holds baby Jesus in his hands, the Bible now tells us something interesting that Simeon said that we're going to unpack. We're going to unpack. We're going to unpack now. Stay with me. Stay with me. The, the Bible says that Simeon said, For my eyes have seen your salvation. Simeon is holding baby Jesus in his hands. And as he looks at baby Jesus, he says, Now my, 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 my eyes have seen your salvation. Hmm. You see, God, church, is the one who gave us Jesus as this beautiful gift of salvation. Notice that in verse 30, Simeon said, For my eyes have seen what? Your salvation. In verse 31, Simeon says, Which you have prepared. So God, God is, is God, Jesus is God's salvation. God is the one who has prepared the salvation for us. Notice that God is the initiator of our salvation. God is the one who gives salvation. This means that salvation couldn't be initiated from humanity. Mm -hmm. No human being, no, no person from a specific culture, a specific class initiated or instituted salvation. God did it. Now, in John chapter 3 and verse 16, listen now, because this is powerful that we're going to look at for a brief moment. John 3, 16, you all have memorized it. No matter where you're from, you know this. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Now, God gave, God gave, God is initiator of salvation. God gave because of what? Because of Love, love move God to institute the plan of salvation. This means that a particular, particular culture, 
or nationality wasn't part of what moved God to bring about salvation. Mm. This love that moved God to save us goes beyond your culture and beyond your nationality. The love that moved God to save us goes beyond even your spiritual status. Mm. Oh, church, you got to understand what I'm saying here because we have grown up to think about some things that need to be torn down through the gospel of Christ. Some of us have grown up to think that you got to be in a particular church to experience the, the beautiful gospel story that God gave. God is the one who gave it. <laughs> Some of you think that you got to be Pentecostal or you got to be Baptist or you got to be Catholic or you got to be Adventist or you got to be Methodist to be able to experience the gospel story or God's salvation. But no, 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 no. I want to let you know from the Bible that there is no uh, religiosity that needs to take place for you to experience a uh, God's move of the gospel story. God's move of the gospel is not based upon a particular denomination. It's only based upon his love. Love moved God to save. Love moved God to come down. Love moved God to give us his son. It was love that moved God. That's why the Bible says, but, but God commendeth his love toward us. Romans 5 verse 8. Love moved God. Not your culture. Not your nationality. Not your denomination. But love, love moved God. So, so get, get that first in your brain to where I'm going now. Love moved God to do what he did. Mm, not only that, not only that. But the Bible says, for God so loved the, the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever, repeat it with me, whosoever now believes in him shall not be perished, but have everlasting life. So in John 3, 16, we see that God's salvation is not just for a particular culture or nationality, but God's love is for whosoever. <laughs> God's love is for whosoever. The black man on the street, whosoever. The white man on the street, whosoever. That white female down the street, whosoever. That Hispanic man and woman down the street, whosoever. A child, whosoever. An adult, whosoever. Seniors, whosoever. No matter where you're from, Europe, Africa, Jamaica, West Indies, whatever, whatever it is, and wherever you are from, God's love, God's salvation in Christ is for you. It's for whosoever. Whosoever. This is for everyone. This is not for a particular group of people now. This is for every single person. So, so now if somebody walks in the street, you, you got to change your perspective. You got to change how you view them now because that's a child of God walking into the church. Whether he is he's a Hispanic, whether he's white or she is black or, or brown or Puerto Rican or European, whatever it is or whatever the person's background is or nationality, you got to see that person as God's child, God's son, God's daughter. You got to change your perspective now about that church. You, because you're Hispanic, you need to go to the Hispanic church. Or because you're from the Caribbean, you need to you need to go to a Caribbean church. Or because you're from America, you need to go to a, a African American church. Oh God, you got to change that church. There's nowhere in the Bible where we see cultural churches being risen up. Oh God, God is not is not the author of cultural churches. God says that we are one people. When God I uh, died when God when Jesus sacrificed his life he says that we are all one in John chapter 17 Jesus prayed that we all should be one so God he wants you to look at me even though I'm from Jamaica and you might be from America we are still one hmm. Woo! I'm enjoying this all by myself. I say we are all one in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Oh boy, I'm coming to your kitchen and I'm coming to your bedroom and I'm coming to your garage because I'm going to park and I'm going to be all up in there until this heretic, uh, this, this heresy is torn down through the gospel of Christ. I'm taking my time. Hold on. I'm soon, soon come to you. Hold on. 
Mm, 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 mm. So we see this. We see this. We see this. Now the Bible says in verse 31 of Luke chapter 2. Here it is. Hear what Simeon says. Simeon says, which you have prepared now the salvation that God gave. God gave salvation. God gives salvation to us. And he says, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Or one translation says, which you have prepared for all nations. The salvation, Jesus Christ. Notice that salvation is attached to Jesus Christ. It's not separated from Christ. Christ is your salvation. Jesus is our salvation. But listen now. Christ now, our salvation, is not for a, per, a particular nation. Luke 2 verse 31 says, Christ, our salvation, is for all nations. Hmm. You got to you got to have a historical background now because Israel believed that salvation was for the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, for Israel as a nation. But now Simeon, it says God's salvation, Christ, is for Jews and Gentiles and for all nations. Oh, Jesus. Simeon, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, declared that God's Son, who is God's salvation, is for all people. Woo! And so, the Simeon, just to give you some, some more strength in the text, Simeon is not the only person who believed that. Mm -mm. All of the disciples believe that Jesus Christ when he sacrificed himself, when, when he sacrificed in your place, when he paid the penalty of sin for you and for me, the Christians believe, church, that Jesus Christ now sacrifices life for all people. So all people have access to God. So all people have now hope. So all people have freedom. All people now can be saved. All people now have access to God's righteousness and justification and sanctification and redemption. All people have access. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 21. Let's break this down and I'm closing. Here it is. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 11 to 21, Paul now speaking to the Ephesians, which populated by a Gentile nation, Speaking now to primarily the Gentiles here, Paul says, who was called to go to the Greek people, the Gentile people, Paul now says, here it is in Ephesians 2, verse 11 to 21, BSB, it says, therefore, remember that formerly you who were called or you who were Gentiles in the flesh and called uncircumcised so here it is now speaking to gentiles he says that you are called the uncircumcised jewish culture built their whole identity around being circumcised you're circumcised you have salvation that's a jewish theological background you're circumcised you get access to heaven automatically you're circumcised you are part of the family of god you're circumcised you will have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Circumcision. So now, the Gentiles are called the uncircumcised. This means you have no salvation. <laughs> this means you have no access to a Holy Spirit. This means you have no access to hope. This means you have no access to forgiveness. No access to freedom. You are called uncircumcised. You are far off from salvation, meaning that you are too far to reach. God is so far from you that there's no hope for you. This is uncircumcised. So they were called when the Jews look at them, they say, look at those uncircumcised folks. Huh? They're worshiping idols over there. They're so far. They're bound for hell. That, 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 that's how you are viewed. That's how we were viewed as uncircumcised. But the text did not stop there. Let's break. Let's keep going. You are called uncircumcised by the so-called circumcision, the Jews, that done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ. So you are separate, meaning that Christ is over there. You're over there. You guys have your two different paths to take. 
alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of the promise. You have no access to the promises, the precious promises of scripture. You have no access for that. So the blessings that were said that Abraham's seed would receive, the blessings upon blessings upon blessing, those blessings are not for the Gentile nation. That's what's going on here. You don't have no access to the promise, promises of God. And then the text says you also were without hope. You had no hope. When problem came in your life, you had no hope. When trials came in your life, you had no hope. When you look for an afterlife, you have no hope. Death is final for you. You have no hope beyond the grave. You have no hope. And without God. So you don't even have access to God. Mm. But, but no, verse 13. Verse 13 of Ephesians 2. The Bible says, but now... This is a whole shift. <laughs> right here, you should be dancing in your living room. You should be jumping up and down off your coach right here. Right here, you should be like, Hoo hallelujah. But now, in Christ Jesus, hear what you have now. You who were once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. One Paul now is saying, here is the heart of the gospel story when it comes on to salvation for all. Through Christ's shed blood, you now have been brought near to God. You now who were afar off, had no hope, uncircumcised, separated from Christ, have no precious promises, but now through Christ, you have precious promises. You have hope. You now are connected to God. You now have precious promises. You now are not separated from Christ. You who were idol worshippers now have been brought near to God. It's the same closeness, the same intimacy that a Jewish nation would have is a same, 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 same intimacy that we all have now in Christ Jesus. And so, that's why one writer says, now you can come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in the time of need. Why? Because Christ, our mediator, Christ, our intercessor, Christ, our spotless lamb who sacrifices life for you, now has brought you near to the throne room of God, has pulled you closer to God now. And so Christ puts his arm around you oh jesus and says you are my daughter you are my child i'm not looking at your mess but i'm looking at what the messiah did our uh, god says that i don't look at your past but i look at what the messiah did christ is saying god is saying now now when i look at you i don't see dust i see destiny when god looks at you he doesn't see a rag he see riches when god looks at you he doesn't see trash he sees a testimony a uh, god when he looks Looks at you now is a complete transformation through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood has brought you near to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's finish up there. The Bible says you have been brought near now to God. For he himself is our peace. Woo! He is our peace. Who has made the two one. So now Christ himself, the one who sacrificed, the one who is our salvation, he now is our peace. Do you want some peace today? Get some Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you want access to peace, grab a hold of Jesus. Get close to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. A hold tight to Jesus and you have peace in the midst of your storm. Your friends will be looking at you and saying, how in the world you're going through the divorce? How in the world you're going through the marital difficulty? How in the world you're going through the trauma? How in the world you're going through the loss of a child? How in the world you're going through the loss of a spouse? How in the world you're going through headache? How in the world you're going through chemo? How in the world you're going through diabetes? but yet still you still have peace how in the world you're going through it but you have a peace that passes all understanding it comes from Christ Christ gives you peace that's what the Bible says you get peace when you get Christ then, then the text says the two now has become one both the Jew and the Gentile have now become one through the sacrifice of Christ. 
You are one with your white friend, one with your African brother, one with your African sister, one with your European cousin, one. You are one in Christ, no difference. Mm -mm. And Christ has torn down, this is what the Bible says, verse 14, has torn down the dividing wall of hostility. There was hostility going between the Jews and the Gentiles. In America, there was hostility going on between the blacks and the whites, between the whites and the browns, between the whites and the Hispanic and the Asians. But now, oh God, oh God, but now Christ has torn down the dividing wall of hostility. There does, it does not, we don't need any hostility now. We don't need to look at each other differently as one superior and the other inferior because Christ has torn down those walls. Abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and decrees. He did this to create in, in, in himself one new man. In Christ, we are now one new man. We have been made new. We have been made afresh. We have been transformed. We have been changed by the blood of Christ. You have been changed. I have been changed. And through Christ, racism must die. Through Christ, colorism must die. Through Christ, nationalism must die. Through Christ, culturalism must die. It must die because it has died at Calvary. But we only can experience transforming power through Jesus, our salvation. Mm. Only through Christ, our salvation, we can experience this right here that has brought us hope, reconciliation, redemption. And verse 19 says, therefore, oh God, you are no longer strangers and foreigners now. Yeah. You, 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 you're no longer strangers. I'm looking at you. Yeah, you are no longer a stranger in Jesus. You might have been in the club. You might have been in the bars. You might have been dancing on poles. You might have been addicted to drugs. You might have been on marijuana. You might have been on cocaine. Whatever you have been on, that cannot define who you are now because Christ says you are now different. You have a new identity. A matter of fact, it took me so long to get my citizenship in America. But now, as soon as I, I, I received Jesus, the Bible says, I'm now a citizen in heavenly places. Oh God. Hey, I don't need to fill out an application. I don't need to read the 28 fundamentals. Yes, they're nice. They're good to do, but I don't need to do that to gain access to being a citizen of the kingdom of God. Yes, I was a citizen in Jamaica. Yes, I'm a citizen in America, but my first citizenship is in the heavenly kingdom. <laughs> it's in Christ Jesus. I am seated in heavenly places. I have my passport in heaven. I have a passport to glory. I have a ticket on my way to glory. I'm not down. I'm not trying to live down here. I'm trying to live up there because Christ has given me a citizenship in the kingdom of God. Hey, hey, you have a citizenship in glory. You are a citizen in heavenly places in spite of your culture, in spite of your nationality, in spite of where you are from. Your first citizenship is in heaven. And we have one Father and one Lord, Jesus Christ. So because we have one Father, we are all God's children. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ with one citizenship. And so now I say, like the psalmist, like my sister said, sing to the Lord a new song. <laughs> Don't sing the song of racism anymore. Stop it. <laughs> Don't sing the song of division anymore. Stop it. So the psalmist says in Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song. 
For he has done wonders. His right hand and holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord has proclaimed his salvation and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. As all the ends of the earth from Jamaica to Africa have seen the salvation of God. Simeon saw it. A German saw it. Peter saw it, Paul saw it, uh, 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 Judah saw it. We have seen the salvation of God. I said, Maranatha saw it. We have seen the salvation of God. How he transformed you. You were a crook, but now you are an evangelist. Oh, you were somebody else, but now look at you. You are totally different in the eyes of God. Sing to the Lord a new song. And see and testify of the goodness of God in your life. Mm. 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 And so my challenge to you today is Embrace Christ Grab a hold of Christ closer and closer every single day So that he will give you some new eyes He will change your eye, lens, your eye glasses He will change your lenses on your glasses So that you'll see every single person as equals in the eyes of God. Father, this week, from now on, put some blood on our eyes. Put some blood on our hearts so that we can see each other as one because we need it. This country has been divided and many countries have been divided. The churches have been creating these cultural churches and cultural congregations and they have been thinking that we cannot work together because we have differences and we have diff we grew up under with different traditions and different backgrounds but god help us to br break down these spirits of division and help us to work better together help us to see each other through the lens of the cross help us to have multicultural churches and not nationality churches or cultural churches help us to be more united god let maranatha let every church that is watching or on today uh, say that i'm going back to the drawing board i'm not just going to target jamaicans i'm not just going to target americans i'm not just going to target hispanics but i'm going to target all people all people from every single culture and nationality because i want to see i want to, uh, my church to experience the power of the gospel of christ that now we are one new man and woman in jesus father thank you for what you have done through christ bless us god please in jesus name amen amen